Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the December 20th meeting of the St. Mary's County Planning Commission. Our meeting this evening is being recorded for the public record. Any announcements, I mean any comments, I'm sorry, any comments made by anyone present must be recorded as part of the record. Therefore, if you have anything to say, you must come up to one of the microphones provided or we can give testimony online or by telephone. Please give us your name followed by your statement. Your comments cannot be recorded and placed in the record unless they are done in this fashion. You are to direct your statements, questions, and responses to the board only, and we will direct them to the appropriate person for an answer. All comments will be kept to five minutes or less. Anyone testifying or asking questions during our public hearings will be required to take an oath. And thank you for your cooperation. And uh, don't forget to um, put your cell phones on silent or, or uh, vibrate if you could. This evening on our agenda, uh, after a review of minutes, uh, our only case this evening is a public hearing. And that public hearing is number 0063 for 2980539 Notch Road. Uh, the owner is Medina Partnership, uh, care of Dr. G.K. Hatoun. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Is that a little better? Thanks. Okay. Better. Okay. Thank you. Um, and the action requested uh, by that group this evening is a review of a comprehensive plan amendment to change the split land use from residential mixed use and residential medium density to, res to entirely mixed use moderate intensity and a zoning map amendment to change the split zone property from residential mixed use and residential low density to entirely town center mixed use for the zoning district. Um, after that, um, barring any um, any new business, we'll have adjournment. Uh, at this time, we'll um, I'll let the board members introduce themselves, starting with Ms. Kim Summers, Patty Robrek, <coughs> Howard Thompson, Joe Saint Clair, Joe Fazekas, Merle Evans. Also, we have uh, one of our members, Mr. Joe Van Kirk, is joining us by Zoom from home. Uh, on our county staff this evening, we have uh, the Director of Land Use and Growth Management, Mr. Bill Hunt, uh, his group, uh, Courtney Jenkins, Brandy Glenn, and Kimberly Wood. Uh, also with us uh, for our supporting county staff, we have uh, our Deputy County Attorney, Mr. Neil Murphy, and uh, we have um, by Zoom also from St. Mary's County Metropolitan Commission, Mr. Andy Balkin, and from uh, Department of Public Works, uh, their Deputy Director, Mr. Don Mills, and the most important lady is Miss Amy Carter, our video, video media producer, taking care of us this evening. Okay, did everybody have a chance to uh, review the December 13th minutes? Is there any corrections, deletions, additions? Do I have a motion to accept? So moved. Second. <clears throat> motion and a second. And I'll do everything by roll call tonight. Uh, Mr. Evans? Aye. Mr. St. Clair? Aye. Ms. Summers? Aye. Mr. Fazekas? Abstain. Okay. Ms. Robert? Aye. Mr. Van Kirk? Abstain. Okay. That's right, you weren't here either. And I'll also vote for them, so they're approved. Okay, moving right along. First case this evening, as I said, will be the Three Notch Road property. Uh, anybody that's going to be testifying this evening or will have questions or, or plan on making statements, um, I'll go ahead and swear everybody in at, the t at this time, if that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna raise your right hand. And anybody out there, in, in, uh, well, I'll ask anybody that's calling in or Zoom later. Uh, do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Okay, thank you all. Okay, Courtney, you wanna okay. go ahead? Okay. All right, 
Good evening, Chair, Vice Chair, and Planning Commission members. Agenda item one is a zoning map amendment and comprehensive plan amendment request for 29805 Three Notch Road. The zoning map amendment seeks approval of a comprehensive plan amendment to change the split land use from residential mixed use and residential medium density to entirely mixed use moderate intensity and a zoning map amendment to change the split zone property from residential mixed use and residential low density to entirely town center mixed use zoning district. The site is located at 29805 Three Notch Road in Charlotte Hall. The land use is res residential mixed use and residential medium density. And the zoning is residential mixed use and residential low density. The regulations for the residential low density district are intended to provide for low to medium density residential development in areas designated in the comprehensive plan. Compatible institutional uses are allowed subject to appropriate standards. The regulations for the residential mixed use district provide opportunities for residential, office, personal, and business development and services subject to standards that will ensure land use compatibility with adjacent residential areas. The regulations for the town center mixed use district provide opportunities for residential and commercial development with town centers consistent with the comprehensive plan. Standards are intended to create an urban character and make the core area safe, pedestrian friendly, and visually attractive. Per the comprehensive plan, town centers are secondary growth centers that are urban and pattern informed, designed for moderately intense residential, commercial, and industrial development, supported by provision of community facilities and services. Town centers are located at Charlotte Hall, New Market, Mechanicsville, Hollywood, and Piney Point. They are designated as growth areas that are secondary to development districts where infrastructure should be provided to support densities of up to five units per acre and where mixed use development should be encouraged. Master plans should be generated for each of the town centers to ensure that visual and functional qualities of development adhere to standards for landscaping, architectural design, on-site and off-site advertising, access, lot coverage, and open space, and buffering from adjacent developments and transportation corridors. Um, it should allow for and provide adequate buffers to avoid conflicts between different land use types and to provide visual screening and should discourage strip development and restrict direct access onto Three Notch Road. The public notice for the Planning Commission public hearing was published in the Southern Maryland News on August 20th, October 8th, and October 15th. The property has been posted in accordance with the CZO requirements, section 21.3.3. Certified mail receipts have been received and have been entered into the record of this public hearing as exhibit one, and the agenda was posted on the website. The zoning map amendment was reviewed at the TEC meeting that was held on June 23rd, 2021. The neighborhood of the subject property for this application request is Charlotte Hall, Maryland, along Maryland Route 235 Three Notch Road. The property backs up to Charlotte Hall Road. The area includes a major transportation corridor with existing commercial and industrial development. Nearby businesses include Southern States, Tender Care Dentistry, Frito-Lay, St. Mary's Landing, Tiger Structures, and Cords Cabinetry. The Farmer's Market and Auction and the Charlotte Hall Shopping Center are located across the street. The location of the property is in the Charlotte Hall Town Center per the zoning map. Per the applicant, the subject property is split zone, creating different rules and allowed uses on the portion of the property that fronts Three Notch Road from those rules and allowed uses on the back portion of the property that fronts Charlotte Hall Road. The split zoning of the property makes it much more difficult to develop and market the property. The applicant believes the split zoning and split land uses is a mistake that occurred with the last land use map changes. 
The property abuts the Southern State's commercial property to the north, which is zone TMX. The applicant is also requesting the proposed zoning due to the change in the character of the neighborhood and surrounding area where the property is located. The property is located within the Charlotte Hall Town Center and this area of the county has seen and continues to see significant commercial development over the past decade. Um, per the St. Mary's County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance, for amendments to zoning maps or text of the ordinance, the Planning Commission and the Board of County Commissioners shall each hold at least one public hearing on an application for an amendment to the official zoning maps. Such hearing uh, may be held jointly at the discretion of the Planning Commission and the Board of County Commissioners. And for review procedures by the Planning Commission, the Planning Commission shall promptly consider applications for amendment. The Commission shall conduct a public hearing for MAP amendments and may conduct public hearings for all other amendments. Generally, within 60 days from its final hearing, the Planning Commission shall transmit its recommendations for approval or disapproval to the county commissioners. The Maryland Department of Planning requires to be notified at least 60 days prior to the scheduled public hearing for any proposed zoning map amendments. The application staff report and supporting documentation was mailed to the Maryland Department of Planning on July 28, 2021. The information was also provided to the Town of Leonardtown, Calvert County Department of Planning, Charles County Department of Planning, and the Tri-County Council for Southern Maryland. Uh, this concludes the staff report and is entered into the record of this public hearing as Exhibit 2. Uh, Mr. Chris Longmore is here representing the applicant, and I would be happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. Okay. Do any of the board members have any questions of staff at this time? Okay. Uh, Mr. Longmore. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. Nice to see you this evening. Um, we do have a PowerPoint that, that I'll walk through and summarize um, our application. Uh, Ms. Jenkins did, did a great job of, I think, summarizing the, the substance of it, so I apologize for, for any overlap, but we'll, I'll walk through it and answer any questions. Um, the summary of our request tonight is that this is an application to amend uh, both the St. Mary's County zoning maps and the land use maps and the, within the comprehensive plan uh, to change the zoning of the property located at 29805 Three Notch Road in Charlotte Hall, Maryland. Um, as mentioned in the staff report, it is currently split zoned with a portion of the property now being RMX, the, which is residential mixed use, and the other uh, portion that fronts Charlotte Hall Road being uh, residential low density. The portion that uh, fronts Three Notch that, that we'll show on the map is the RMX property. Uh, the land use maps um, have similar land uses uh, within the comprehensive plan. Um, and they are residential mixed use and residential medium density at this time. And the applicant is requesting that the zoning map be amended so that the property be rezoned as uh, TMX and that the land use map likewise uh, be amended for compatible land use uh, in the um, name of mixed use moderate intensity. Um, I will say that, um, just to be clear, because uh, I reviewed some of the comments uh, there was one written comment on the um, on board docs uh, today from from some neighbors. Just to be clear, this is not a, a development request at this time. There are no entrances being proposed in any way. Um, there are no specific uses being proposed. This is simply to change the zoning maps. And I'll, I'll probably mention it again at the end, but any request to, com to develop this in any commercial fashion uh, would appear before the Planning Commission at a later time for site plan review, as, as I know the Planning Commission uh, well knows. But just to, to make sure it's clear that we're not requesting any of the things that um, there were some comments in the letter that seemed like there were, uh, it was a development review tonight, and, and it's not. We're only asking for the map amendments. If we go to the next slide. Uh, this is just an aerial photo that, that's similar to the one that Ms. Jenkins showed. Uh, the road to the right um, is the major collector, Maryland Route, uh, or uh, Three Notch Road, Maryland Route 5, and then Charlotte Hall Road is the road to the left. Um, the, the building immediately at the top, um, the upper portion, the upper right portion of that photo is the Southern States 
uh, commercial center and then just immediately uh, to the bottom of that or to the south is tender care dentistry um, that fronts Three Notch Road in that, in that photo. If we go to the next slide. Um, this is the current zoning map where you can see that the front portion of um, my client's property is zoned RMX um, and the back portion that fronts uh, Charlotte Hall Road is currently zoned RL and you can see that it is split zoned. Um, the Southern States property immediately to the north of our property is zoned TMX, that it's the zoning category uh, that my client is requesting that this be rezoned to. If we go to the next slide, um, this likely this also shows the land use maps, um, and the back portion is zoned residential medium density, um, and the front portion, um, and I apologize, is zoned um, um, residential medium density in the front. Um, so those are the the um, you can see that it's also split in the land use map of the of the comprehensive plan. If we go to the next slide. Um, the amendment process, I think staff um, uh, described this very accurately. I won't belabor this, but we did submit our application to, to land use and growth management. Um, it requires that the planning director deem that to be a complete application. Then it goes to the TEC agencies and also Maryland Department of Planning is given the opportunity to review. They did review this application. Their comments um, are attached to the staff report. We're at the step that is in bold and underlined in that outline uh, that is to be reviewed by the planning commission. Um, we will ask for a favorable recommendation tonight, but regardless, this can then go to the Board of County Commissioners where they will hold a, a second public hearing since this is not a joint hearing tonight. Um, the Board of County Commissioners ultimately will decide the request. If we go to the next slide. Um, this just shows um, the language in the uh, zoning ordinance that talks about the role of the Planning Commission um, in this process. Again, stating that there'll be a public hearing um, and then from the hearing, um, the Planning Commission transmits its recommendations to the County Commissioners, which again, we're asking for a favorable recommendation tonight. If we go to the next slide. Um, these are some, and I know that the Planning Commission has seen this slide or this standard before. Um, as you'll recall, uh, we were actually here with this application in October and it got continued, it was not heard by the Planning Commission that night, I believe we ran out of time. Um, but another similar application was heard. Um, and the, the, my client needs to show that either there was a mistake in the original zoning of the property or that there's been a substantial change in the character of the neighborhood uh, since the previous zoning. That would have been in 2010 under the previous um, comprehensive plan and rezoning that was done as part of that process. Um, and, and you can see there that there's a, a standard in one of the Maryland cases that talks about rezoning under Maryland law um, that um, we must over come the liberal standard um, and, and ask that it be reclassified um, in, in to, from one commercial category to another, a portion, and, and essentially that quote in that case stands for the proposition that when part of the property is zoned commercial, there's less of a um, hurdle that we need to get over to have it rezoned in another commercial fashion. And again, part of this property is already zoned mixed use, and that's what we're asking for tonight, uh, that it be zoned in another category, mixed use category. If we go to the next slide. Um, so as to the, the argument as to the mistake in the original zoning, um, this is primarily based on the property being split zoned, which is generally disfavored um, under Maryland law. Um, and generally by our county as well. I think I mentioned at the last hearing um, through the Lexington Park um, planning process as the planning commissioner will remember, um, there was great effort taken to identify split zone properties and to make them one zoning category, um, both for ease of development so the rules are clear uh, within the specific property and within the specific districts it's in. Um, there really is no um, good policy reason for split zone properties. Um, and in this case, the property immediately to, our north, to the north of my client's property is fully zoned TMX um, and has a, a, a commercial use on that. Um, and uh, the Planning Commission has also recently recommended the rezoning of another split zone property um, that I was here representing, um, as you'll recall. Um, that, that the recommendation of the board was to approve that. That is not going before the Board of County Commissioners, but, uh, but the, the um, recommendation was transmitted. So if we go to the next um, standard, and, and we're asking that it be rezoned under both of these tonight, but certainly with either one would satisfy for a favorable recommendation. Um, 
as mentioned by the staff report and the Maryland Department of Planning focused on this as well. The property is located within the Charlotte Hall Town Center. Um, the town centers are, are the just under the development districts within our zoning um, ordinance and our comprehensive plan is where new development is supposed to be um, directed. Um, the neighborhood as it's defined depends on kind of the nature of this property. So there's not one legal definition uh, that we can look at to determine what the neighborhood of this property is. You look instead um, as to how the other area is developed um, and, and what type of, you know, how big the neighborhood may be. And a real urban center might only be a block or two in a rural area, it can be a little larger. Um, we've given some examples of the significant development that has occurred in the area since 2010 in the last rezoning. Um, we did this by going through and looking um, at the state records as to when the primary structures were built on the different properties. And you can see there's um, office buildings, there's fast food um, that's been added to it. There's the VA outpatient center just across 235. Um, and of course, there's the significant commercial development um, slightly to the north uh, where grading and road improvements have been done just across from the, the farmer's market for the commercial center that's under development there. Um, so those are, we believe, uh, some evidence that this neighborhood has changed in the last um, 11 or 12 years. If we go to the next slide, um, there were concerns raised at the last hearing um, relating to a property near this as to the historic sites that may be near. Uh, these properties and whether rezoning them would infringe on those sites. Um, these are, uh, this is an excerpt from the county GIS map. Um, as you can see, the area is zoned in red, um, was the, is, has been identified as a historic place um, according to the National Register. And the purple markers are actually historic trust sites according to the Maryland Historic um, Trust. The um, asterisks or the, or the, that are, written across the top of that GIS slide is where the subject property is located. It's almost immediately across 235 from Carpenter Lane. Um, the, the approximate distance from the edge of the of that red, almost trapezoid um, type, or, or I guess oddly shaped rectangle, um, is about a third of a mile um, up Route 235 from the closest of these sites, so there is some distance in there. So we do not believe this would adversely affect any of the historic sites. If we go to the next slide, um, I mentioned that there are comments from the Maryland Department of Planning, um, and I highlighted some of the language in their comments. They review this solely for the the land use map change in the comprehensive plan, but we think that it it is um, instructive to, to the mistake that we believe was made previously. Um, and as you can see that um, the Maryland Department of Planning refers to that split zoning, you know, as an oddity and, and this um, application will create one cohesive land use parcel. Um, they also, um, in those comments mentioned, and you can see um, some mentioned here that the land use change that we're proposing will be consistent with the current comprehensive plan. Um, again, relating to the town centers being secondary growth centers only to the development districts um, within our, our county plan. So if we go to the next slide. So the summary of our request is that we believe that the original zoning and land uses were a mistake um, and that that's demonstrated by the split zoning of this property and all the um, concerns and problems that that raises. Um, and we don't believe there's a good policy reason for this property to remain split zoned. Um, likewise, the character and neighborhood of this portion of the Charlotte Hall Town Center has changed substantially since the last rezoning um, by the development that we highlighted as well as other development um, nearby. Um, and we would um, believe that we meet both standards to meet the standards for rezoning this property and changing the land use maps. If we go to the the last slide, I think, or is that the last one? So our requested action is that um, the Planning Commission do two things, rec rec make a recommendation for an amendment to the county zoning map to rezone the entire property TMX, and that also the Planning Commission recommend an amendment to the land use maps um, to designate the entire property as mixed use, moderate intensity as land use. And I believe that's the last one. 
Um, so that's our, our presentation. I know there are members of the public that um, have voiced concerns at the last hearing. We, we welcome um, hearing their comments and would appreciate the chance to rebut that after public comment. But if there's any questions uh, before that, I'm happy to answer them. Um, I'll note that in the audience is Mark Lar Larner, who's a representative of my client, who's the contract purchaser of the property. So he's also here if you have any questions for him. Does anybody have any questions of Mr. Longmore at this time? I'll make one observation. I think we brought this up last time and it's not a big thing, but I don't know if it's exactly, it was a mistake when they did the split zoning. I think, I th personally, I think it was more of an oversight. I know uh, working on that last comp plan, I think we tended to, uh, I'll say, keep more of an eye on the southern part of the county and the, and the growth areas and such. And I just think a lot of these, and we're picking up a lot of these as we go along, finding out that these split zonings, which we've been trying to correct, but uh, I guess I'm trying to say that the board didn't really make a mistake. It was more of an oversight at the time. Yeah. Um, it, and staff too. I mean, it wasn't anything that you know was done. You know, let's split this in half so we can come, so we can have a hundred folks come see us later on down the road. <laughs> it, it was more of a, as I'll say, an oversight at the time. And uh, we'll be picking these up every now and then, yeah. and, and correcting them as they go along. And we can appreciate that certainly. I mean, that's the language in the in the case law that I have to present to you tonight. I understand. We, we certainly. Um, can understand that and I remember working with the planning commission during the Lexington Park plan and identifying some of those other properties. So, so we certainly didn't mean it as any offense to the, to the planning commission, but we legally can, I have to, to say that word. We can agree to disagree on that, Mr. Longmore. That's fine. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you. And, and again, we'd reserve the right to present okay. rebuttal, present rebuttal after public comment. Okay. Thank you. Um, if there's nothing else from the applicant, then I'll open it up to public testimony. What I'll do is I'll go down the um, list that we have outside, and um, after that, I will ask if there's anybody else here in the uh, audience that wants to speak, and then I'll uh, ask that we see if we've had any phone calls that come in that time. A lot of times it takes a little while to get those configured, so during, uh, I'll say, um, present public testimony, we'll do that. They can get everything straight. Uh, I ask everybody that uh, has any presentations or anything this evening, it's five minutes or less. Okay, our first name on uh, the list this evening is Carolyn Curtis. <clears throat> and I know I did give you the oath. I remember most of them. So, but I'll ask everybody as you come on. You did take the oath when Yes, we, I did. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Carolyn Curtis. I'm the owner of two properties, 29849 and 29821, which are directly across the planned uh, areas for uh, the change in zoning. Uh, Interestingly, um, our grandfather purchased 29.75 acres of property in 1906. And we're thinking that this property is a part of the property that he purchased back at that. So part of my testimony tonight would be a video that I have prepared, and I will provide a few comments once that video is completed. And this is in, um, to respond to some of the questions that were at the last meeting. I don't think there was an understanding of the beauty of our community and also questions around is there agriculture, what? So this is prepared for your taking.
couple of things I'd like to bring your attention to. Uh, even though there was notation tonight about the location of the historic district, that it's about a third of a mile, it's very close. A third of a mile is very close. But what I did was to also, as we visited our neighbors whom we have known for generations, this generations, there are 21 properties that, are, that meet the definition of historic, meaning that they are 50 years or older, above and outside of the Northern Senior Center, outside of the historic district. While I realize and hear that this is a question in regard to the change in zoning, let's not be, um, shall I say, let's not take advantage of the intelligence of the community. We do know that once there's a change in zoning that there's something more coming after that. You're not gonna ask for a changing zoning just to have a change in zoning. We know that that means increased development. We know that that means implications for our community. Those that I have brought up in the video and I'm sure will be uh, borne by others here in the community. Um, for that, for those historic buildings, that will mean what happens with the construction, which I'm sure will be planned if there's a change in zoning. Who's gonna pay for damage to our homes? Mine is directly across, I have two houses directly across from where this is planned. Who's gonna pay for water, sewer, as you can see, just with that heavy rain that we had about two years ago, that was the water standing in our yards. <clears throat> Traffic, there is no downtime for traffic on this road. There is traffic at three o'clock in the morning. There is traffic at any point in time, and this is without a change to town center. Okay, Ms. Curtis, you have about another minute, please. Yes, and so I just wanted to bring some of these up. I'm sure others will bring up others as well. Thank you so much Thank you, for the opportunity. Thank you. Yes, any questions for me at this time? or? Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Curtis? Great video. Thank you. I wanted you to see pictures say a thousand words. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker I have on the list is Joan Waters. Good evening, ma'am. Thank I, you for. I did give you the oath. Yes. Just going to yes. Ask everybody. yes. Thank you for the opportunity to um, say a few words yes, to you. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of my sister and siblings and other family who uh, live on Charlotte Hall Road, as well as neighbors. Could I get your address, please, ma'am? I am at 29861 Charlotte Hall Road. Thank you. Um, I'm going to read the letter that we would like to submit to you as well as to the Board of County Commissioners. And it actually concerns this property as well as 29871, which you approved in October. And I would like to make a correction. Um, this continuance for this particular property tonight was not because we ran out of time on October 25th. It was a request by the applicant for a continuance to better prepare. So we, the undersigned residents and concerned neighbors of Charlotte Hall Road are opposed to the rezoning of the above reference properties 29805 and 29871. The applicants, current property owners contend that the St. Mary's County Comprehensive Plan mistakenly designated and zoned these properties as residential mixed, mixed use and low density zoning properties. We vehemently disagree and believe that the county planners in 2010 and since intentionally retained the residential aspect of the mixed zoning. It would keep commercial development to a minimum and maintain zoning that would not adversely affect residential life. The applicant's primary consideration, in our view, seems to be increased development and marketability and cite significant commercial development in the area over the past 10 years. Development on either property, property would substantially increase vehicular traffic and noise on Charlotte Hall Road and affect the roadway itself. 
Traffic has steadily increased over the years, even without major development on Charlotte Hall Road. And unfortunately, life-ending car accidents have occurred on the curved road between the two properties. Motorists wish to skip and avoid traffic signals on Three Knots Road, which runs parallel to Charlotte Hall Road, and speed through the area, ignoring posted speed limits. As well, whenever accidents occur on Three Knots Road, traffic is detoured through our neighborhood. It has become unsafe to even walk across to one's mailbox on the opposite side of the road. Our quiet neighborhood will also be drastically impacted by the proposed Royal Farms Starbucks convenience store planned for the northern end of the road, of Charlotte Hall Road. We foresee those patrons also racing through our neighborhood. Apartment units proposed for 29871, and I know that's not the subject for tonight, um, but the, I believe the entry is proposed directly or indirectly onto Charlotte Hall Road, which will add to the congestion. That property, just north of Southern States, is at a blind curve in Charlotte Hall Road, and it is a deadly mix with the increased traffic. We, the descendants of Abraham Butler, are among several families with deep roots in Charlotte Hall. As my sister stated, he purchased properties in 1908. We are third generation to own and reside on land that he worked by hand as a farmer, and we are investigating having it declared a historic district. As are other properties adjacent to us and including um, the Veterans Home. We honor the legacy of our family roots in St. Mary's County especially being the only African Americans owning and occupying property in Charlotte Hall for over a century, to be exact, 114 years. As stated in the comprehensive plan on page 2-16, in general, St. Mary's County must strive to preserve and enhance its present character and improve the quality of life for its citizens while maintaining a pace of growth and development that is well management. Development is to be of a controlled nature, directed to the most appropriate areas and discouraged in other areas. So we implore you to deny the requested rezoning request. Attached to this letter are signatures of 30 of our neighbors that we, I'd like to submit to the commission tonight. Do I have a couple time, a little time to make a few other comments? You've got about a minute. Pardon? You have about a minute left. Okay, great. I'll talk fast. <laughs> so in my view, in our view, it is important to note that the county is not, um, is not the one considering the rezoning. It is the application of a property owner who has other things in mind. And I take issue with the definition of reasonable interpretation of neighborhood that was mentioned earlier. There's no mention of the citizens. There's no mention of the residents. The only concern is about the development, because that's the only thing cited. What development has occurred? Not one sentence about families that have been there for years and years and years. And I challenge the thought of it being an oversight by the commission. I believe it was purposely zoned the way it is to maintain some level um, of re quality of life for the residents. Uh, on a personal note, growing up in Charlotte Hall, I couldn't wait to get out. I'm like, this is just too slow. So I went to the big city. I lived in and around D.C. for many, many years. But after the kids came, it's like, okay, city life is fine if you're single. This is my view. There are others who disagree. But I wanted the country life. And I slowly migrated back home. And I wouldn't live anywhere else. I'm asking you, on behalf of my family and our neighbors, not to destroy the way of life that we enjoy the calm country life. 
That is what is at stake. You may ask, why do we dwell so much on the historic aspect? Because historic equals community. We've been there, again, for our family for over 100 years. There are many other families that have been there for 50 years, even 20. That's a long time. And so we are trying to preserve the quality of life, not just for our family, but for our whole community. Okay, Ms. Waters. I think that's it. <laughs> Thank came, you for your time. Came in right on if, time. If I haven't been clear, we strongly, strongly oppose and hope that you reject this rezoning request. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, our next speaker would be Ann Gregory. I'm going to not speak at this time, maybe later on. Okay. Um, Michael McCauley. Good evening, sir. I did get a chance to give you the oath. Pardon? I did get a chance to swear you in a little while ago. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, thank, thank you. Could you give us your name and address, please? My name is Michael McCauley. I live at 29576 Charlotte Hall Road. Okay, sir, you have five minutes. When I read the, the document, it was, can I proceed or? Yes, sir, please. Okay. Sir. I'm sorry. Uh, the document that was submitted in support of this application I noticed that uh, it includes this statement, master plans should be generated for each of the town centers to ensure that visual and functional qualities of development adheres to standards for landscaping, architectural design, on-site and off-site advertising, lot <coughs> coverage and open space and buffering from adjacent developments and transportation corridors allow for and provide adequate buffers to avoid conflicts between different land use types and to provide visual screening, discourage strip development and restrict direct access onto Three Notch Road in Charlotte Hall, Newmarket, Mechanicsville and Hollywood. I don't think that a master plan has ever been done that is in keeping with the statement here that the master plan should be generated for each of the town centers. I don't think this ever has ever been done. And I think it's necessary for it to be done to make development attractive and to make this gateway to St. Mary's County something to be, to strike people as beautiful and welcoming and reflective of the agricultural and historic values that are that exist here in Charlotte Hall. So for some reason, the last master plan, I think, the, of, of smaller um, areas, not the, the Lexington Park is small, but uh, Lexington Park, I think, was done in 2016. That was five going on six years ago. Plenty of time to have developed a master plan for Charlotte Hall. So I'm suggesting that before there's more strip development, more hodgepodge type of throwing different land uses together, that there should be a moratorium on, on these things until the county carries out its responsibility to produce a master plan. At one time I had the opportunity to, uh, for the first time, to drive into Jersey City, New Jersey. 
and all along the main road entering that fairly large city, there was a series of chain link fenced lots with different kinds of um, different kinds of techno technology uh, technical components, car lots, junkyards. Uh, little restaurants here and there, sweatshop type of shops. It was certainly not an attractive entrance to a city or any place of dense development. I see it starting to happen now along 235. When I drove into Charlotte Hall, I mean I drove into to Jersey City, uh, I couldn't help thinking, this is where we're going in St. Mary's County. We're gonna look like this because the comprehensive plan has been ignored for places like Charlotte Hall. I don't, I don't see any evidence that the master plan was done for Charlotte Hall, even though this statement here says it should be generated for each of these town centers. There are conflicting uses between what's here now and what's being proposed. So it, it would be a good thing, a good outcome for this to lead to the creation of this master plan, which whoever wrote this says should be done. It hasn't been done. And to throw different land uses together is just to create a continually enlarged diversity of uses without taking into account how existing existing land uses can be protected. It here talks in here about adequate buffers, avoiding conflicts between different land use types, discouraging strip development in this here and that there. We need to do this to protect our county, to protect, protect the entrance to our county from becoming this What's, what we see now down a little farther toward Mechanicsville, if you drive there now, if you see the chain link fence with a horrible mess of different objects and goings on there. So I would urge you not to approve this, this zoning until the master plan can be developed and take into account and thoughtfully approach the conflicts that potentially exist there. It's called for the, by our own, <clears throat> our own, uh, not a regulation maybe, but a, our, the, own, our, the provisions that we have taken to, to move toward planning and to drop different land uses here and there without thoughtfully approaching how land uses that currently exist can be protected in some way or screened, buffered. Unless we do that, we're, we're giving up our future, giving up the appeal of an attractive rural type of space seen as you enter into this county. So I urge you to strongly to take into account the absence of a master plan as called for and the potential negative effects it's gonna have. You can approve this one, but then you're gonna have another one and you're gonna have another one. And one by one, they're just gonna change dramatically the appearance of what it 
is like to enter St. Mary's County, Maryland. Okay. Thank you. Is there any questions, Mr. McCauley? Mr. McCauley. Mr. McCauley, do I have one of the board members has a question? You can sit if you want. Um, first, I'd like to applaud you for pointing out the fact that the master plan does not exist for this town center. Um, I am the oddball on this, on this commission here because uh, I'm, I'm a newcomer to the St. Mary's County. Um, and I've not been able to get a straight answer as to why that is the case. It's, it should be done. Um, we have one for Lexington Park Development District. That's where I live. So I benefit as a resident and also I think we all benefit when there are projects that we are considering in there because that is a tool that we use. Right. And for me, not like, like I said, being a newcomer, to know what my predecessors wanted, what does the county want in terms of growth and development. The comprehensive plan that we have is the, the biggest tool that I have to decide when development comes in, what is appropriate or inappropriate for our people. And a master plan definitely would make our job a lot easier if there was one for each of these town centers. So I believe you are correct, and I thank you for bringing that up. However, I think that there's two different things here. Today, we're talking about a zoning issue and what does it look like on paper, and then based upon the zoning, what can you do with that property? That's one thing. Um, a moratorium on that, I'm not sure if that makes sense, but when then you talk about actual construction and, and approving development plans, concept plans, there's something where what you said might have some teeth. Now, I'm no legal expert, and I'm not gonna try to pretend one to be one, but I think there is some, some wisdom in what you said that for lack of a clear direction on what Charlotte Hall wants to be, we're making decisions blindly looking at treating Charlotte Hall like the rest of the county, and clearly it's not. You and, and Ms. Curtis and Ms. Walters have, have, have shown us, and, and just from driving through Charlotte Hall, we know it's, it's a different community, it's a different feel for that. So, um, so thank you for that, but I think, I think some of that that you brought to the today, I think would be very helpful, I wouldn't say if, I'd say when this property comes again for, for some type of development. So, um, yeah, that's all I had to say right now. Okay. But, but there's also a planning request, I mean, a, a statement that the change must relate to the existing comprehensive plan, which I assume is the ones done many years ago for the county as a whole. And maybe these uses were separated, not by mistake, but on purpose <laughs> that- Mr. Chairman, I cannot hear. Planning we have, pardon? Could you uh, use your microphone, please, sir? Maybe this was not a mistake at all, but it was an effort by somebody in this general comprehensive plan that covered the whole county to say, well, we got this agricultural, this rural, this historical area on one side of the road, and we have our main thoroughfare on the other side, so these properties in between we're gonna make as a boundary, as a buffer, the best we can do right now till they develop, make their own plan for Charlotte Hall. So I would say it's not a mistake, probably. Okay. Right. Mr. Evans. Yeah, so, <clears throat> not so odd. <laughs> um, we actually had a chat between the two of us before this started, and it's nice to see you again. I know over the years you've attended any number of meetings oh. uh, with regard to uh, planning. During my tenure here on this on this board and being involved in, in the county, um, I'll be the first to tell you that um, in a perfect world, um, master plans for village and town centers, absolutely. Um, 
it would, in my view, as a planner, would always be better to um, share with a, 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 a potential developer what we'd like to see and where we'd like to see it. Um, but Mr. McCauley, I've been doing it, I've been around this a long, long time. And, and back when we were talking about the Callaway Village Center, and I don't know if you remember that or not, um, we spent hours and hours and hours going over that. You know, this is what we like to see, this is what we wanna do, this is how we see the Village Center uh, moving forward. And at the end of the day, um, the pushback came when the villagers, it was the villagers that, that were sitting on these boards and commissions. Uh, it was their property is what they saw, but then that was the pushback. I don't know who else you would ask to put together a master plan for your community other than a villager. I mean, I don't know that, that when they were doing Callaway, reaching out to people that live in Charlotte Hall would have been the smart thing to do. Um, I just don't. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, at the end of that, what came of it was nothing. There is a, a possible master plan sitting on a shelf someplace, but a, co a commissioner threatened a moratorium on building in the county. When he threatened that moratorium, everything came to a screeching halt. So I understand the, the notion of moratorium, but as a tool, um, I don't think it's something that is appropriate uh, to use the tool. Um, I don't think that the political will has ever existed um, to do master planning. I just don't think it has. Now, in other county, well, I use Calvert. Calvert did have, and does have, town centers. And my conversation with two commissioners after that was passed was, we'll never get reelected. <laughs> One actually did. But for, for them to have people come and say, listen, we want to come to your town center, and this is what we propose. And we propose this because this is what you said you would like to see here. Uh, to me is, a, is a, uh, a much better way to do comprehensive planning. And that word comprehensive, here we go again. Um, yeah, I mean, and I, and I it's highlighted. Um, because, because we talk about this a lot, Mr. McCauley, about the, um, the requirement to have master planning done, and yet it, and yet it isn't. Um, and, and there lacks the political will, there lacks, I guess maybe the, because monetarily, I think it's probably a very expensive process. Um, and I think that's, that's perhaps lacking, but that doesn't make it any easier for villagers or town center residents or any of the rest to um, sort of bite their tongue a little tiny bit. Uh, that, said, uh, that said, perhaps you're right. Perhaps when this was done, somebody decided this would be a great way for it to be buffered. You know, perhaps, I don't, I don't recall. Um, but typically, this is, would be a poor way, I think, to do that, to split zone these properties. Um, and Mr. Thompson spoke a, a, a while ago, because during Lexington Park, and I mean, I left and then came back, but then um, during that time, we had, uh, addressed a lot of those split zone properties. Um, and I don't know that um, they, and again, I, they weren't mistakes. Uh, you know, they were oversights. I would agree with. I would agree with that. And we had some on 235 that recently, I was very clear that I didn't believe they were mistakes. Now the community has changed, and that's the other side of that. If the community change and they changes and they can show that there's a, a change in the community, then um, then they can you know, they can make application and we we need to address it. Um, I, I don't believe um, in that some of these places were mistakes. Oversights, maybe. And maybe deliberate, maybe, I don't, but I, I don't know that. Um, and, and so I would agree, I, I wholeheartedly would love to see uh, a master plan for Charlotte Hall. And honestly, some several years ago, there was actually talk of it. Um, and then, 
you have to consider the village, the, I see the villagers, the town center, the <laughs> residents. There was pushback from them. They weren't ready for it. This isn't, we're not ready for that sort of thing. Um, we talked about commercial downstairs, residential upstairs, walkable communities, uh, buoy town center type parking, you know, adjacent, you know, adjacent parking, all those kinds of things that you talk about. All those things cost a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of money and uh, a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of engineering. Um, and, and again, in a perfect world, we, we would have had master plans. We would have had village centers. We have done a wonderful job in naming, in naming town centers and, and village centers, but that's really about the extent of it. I mean, we really haven't done much, much else. We rely on developers. We rely on, and it, people don't have to like it, but that's the long and the short of it. I mean, either, either somebody, somebody has to pay, and if you're gonna do a master plan, um, then the government's gonna have to step up. But right now, it, it's always been that way in St. Mary's County. It's always been development generated, always. I don't know of it ever uh, been any differently. Um, developers, you know, developers plunk down their hard-earned money, they buy properties, and then they try to, to, to do what they believe the community wants, I think, by and large. When I was a boy, 235 was a two-lane highway. None of, this was, none of this was here, and yet, and yet, as the community grew, they had wants. We want this, we would like to have that. In my, in my world, I had probably six or eight businesses that jumped from place to place because the community continued to want. They wanted something else. They wanted a Kmart, they wanted a Walmart, they wanted all things. And every time that came, you know, it takes a little bit away from you. So a lot of this is generated by the community. So, and I'm not saying, I don't know what will come of this particular parcel, Mr. McCauley, but, but I, I, can't, I can't sit here and be opposed to a developer wanting to develop a parcel of land that is his and he has some rights to do that. I can sit here and agree with you that we lack a town center and village center master plans and that is, a, a, in my view, a terrible oversight. Um, I just don't know, as we sit here, um, what, I don't have an answer for you. I wish I, if I did, um, I wouldn't sit here every week uh, talking about talking about the need for village and, and town centers, Mr. McCauley. So, okay, you're you're the planning commission. <laughs> no, we're planning commissioners. There's seven of us up here. <laughs> <laughs> Jersey City, here we come. Yeah, but see, the, the downside is that no, we sit here try to do the very best we can given the given what we have before us. And to be honest with you, uh, you know, a lot of us take this, this, what we do very seriously. And I mean, I think I've been here three or four terms, something like that. And, and so if you wanna blame somebody for some of this stuff, you can blame me. There's a lot, there are a lot of things I drive around St. Mary's County and I'm very proud of. There are other things, not so much. And one of those things is that we don't have village and town centers and that, and that my view of a, of a town center and village center is, is much different than what I see, so. Hey. Okay, thank, thank you. you. But thanks. Else have any questions? Okay. I don't have anybody else on my sheet. Um, did you want to check and see? Excuse Someone me. Some lady right there. We had any call-ins? Um, okay, hold on one second. She's already started this project. I'll, I'll give you a chance. <laughs> Hi, Kimberly. Do we have anyone on the phone that wishes to speak? Yeah, it's on Park One. Okay, thank you. Good evening. This is Courtney Jenkins. Um, I believe you are on hold to speak um, for the December 20th Planning Commission meeting uh, regarding case zone 21-0063 for 298053 Three Notch Road. Um, our chair is going to ask you for your name and address and swear you in before you speak. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, can I have your name and address, please? I'm here with you. Uh, sir, can you please state your name and address? Uh, my name is Adal Curtis. I'm the personal representative of the state of Andy Curtis, located at uh, 29, 849 Charlotte Road. Okay, Could you give us your first name, please, again, sir? I believe it's Donald Curtis. Okay. Uh, Donald. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you hear me, Mr. Curtis? I know there's a slight delay. Mr. Curtis, can you? Um, can you hear me? Chair Thompson. Uh, yes, I can. I'm watching on YouTube as well. Okay, I know there's a slight bit of delay when it's on YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and give you the um, oath and ask you to raise your right hand. And do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, you have you have uh, five minutes, Mr. Curtis. All right, I'd like to associate myself, first of all, with the comments and the presentation made by uh, my two sisters, Carolyn Curtis and Joan Waters, and also Mike McCauley uh, as well. Um, I wanted to emphasize a couple of things, uh, which is the basis for the applicant uh, requesting a uh, rezoning of property that's just about right across the street from, uh, from my, my mom's house. First is, uh, and I think it's been said many times tonight already about uh, the split zoning, and I prefer to not look at it as a mistake or an oversight, really, but rather to have a feel for the, uh, the area uh, in question. It says that per the applicant, the subject property is split zone, creating different rules and allowing uses on the portion of the property that affronts Three Notch Road or, or Route 235. Uh, from that, that also uh, uh, abuts on uh, the front of uh, Charlotte Hall Road. I think all you have to do is just travel down that area and you find that it's reasonable and, and, and sane to be able to do that. You have one road that's a dual highway, which has different rules and different uses available to it. And then you have a, an old country road, which is Charlotte Hall Road. And you look at that, and that also should have different rules and allowable uses on that portion of the property as well. So I don't think it was a mistake, and I definitely don't think it was an oversight. I think it was being smart, because if you look at a dual highway and you look at a country road, it's just reasonable to understand that you have different uses and different uh, available development and whatnot on those two use roads. In fact, the Maryland Department of Transportation opposes this application to redistrict this, uh, rezone this particular part of the land. The second uh, area, so I don't think it's a mistake at all. I just think it's reasonable, it's logical. It would be insane to treat a dual highway the same way you would treat a country road or to keep treat a country road the same way you would treat a dual highway. That would be an oversight and a mistake. So I, 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 I disagree with the applicant. The second is that there has been a significant change in the character of the neighborhood surrounding where the property is located. And of course, that is just absolutely not true at all. Uh, the very fact that there, there are a number of structures that's been there for over 50 years, and just a casual drive through that area will tell you while on Renox Road through 235, yeah, that has changed. 
But on the backside, Charlotte Hall Road, that has not changed at all. The other thing, too, is that I want to point out uh, the fact that uh, the applicant is more concerned about development, as I think uh, Joan Waters indicated, and not concerned at all about the residents. There is not one word mentioned again about the residents, the people who live there at all, but there's great attention given to businesses, Southern State, and the Care Dentistry, Frito Lake, St. Mary's Landing, Tiger Structures, Coors Cabinetry, the Farmers Market, Auction, Shaw Hall Shopping Center. They're all that, but not one tip at all about the residents, the people who are there. The last thing I'd like to put on the table for you to consider, you have one applicant, one property owner who wants to do, uh, who wants to have a change in the zoning, and you have 30 other uh, residents, 30 other property owners who are against it. A democratic look at this and say, ah, oh, you got 30 against and one in favor. Who wins? Well, I think in a democracy, the 30 would win and not the one. And I would hate to think that a developer is the one that really fashions the character of a community rather than the residents who actually live in the community. And so I hope we don't allow developers to be the one, to be the ones that characterize the developed neighborhood as opposed to those who actually live there. So I'm hoping you'll give serious consideration to 30 property owners who are against it versus the one who is in favor of it. And one last comment, by refusing to rezone the property does not take away any rights from the applicant. The applicant can right now develop it within the current zoning. Okay, are there any questions to Mr. Curtis? Mr. Curtis, we appreciate your calling in this evening. That's the end of my comment. Please say. Okay, thank you, sir. Calling in. Thank you. Do you want to check and see if there's anybody else? Ma'am, I am coming to you. Don't worry. Planning Commission public hearing. Ms. Wood, do we have anyone else on the line? No, we do not. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, ma'am, do you want to come up and I'll get you? Did I have a chance to give you the oath? Yes, you did. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I have your name, please? My name is Jean Thomas Adams. My address is 29875 Charlotte Hall Road, Charlotte Hall, Maryland. It was Jean Thomas Adams. Okay, thank you. I gotta write all these things down, I'm sorry. I've got all the time. I just, I just wanna make sure I do, <laughs> do things right. I was sworn in early. Okay, yes ma'am, go ahead. Yes. You have five minutes. Um, good evening, I'd like to uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, mostly I'd like to reiterate the comments that were made at the previous hearing. Um, I just like to read a letter and then have a few comments so that I don't go over my uh, five minutes. Um, to the Planning Commission, um, as a native resident of Charlotte Hall, I am opposed to reclassifying or rezoning the property parcel uh, 298053 Notch Road in Charlotte Hall. Um, I, I've learned it's currently zoned residential mixed use and residential medium density, and I request that it stay in that class classification. I, along with my relatives, the Curtis, Butler, Thomas, um, 
and another Thomas family member. We all oppose the mixed use, moderate intensity, town center, mixed use rezoning. Um, this opens up the door for excessive development. We have not been advised of the exact purpose, and I understand the owner does have a right. However, we as residents, um, the youngest of us being in our 60s up to our high 80s, have lived there or have been uh, attached to this property across the street from the area um, for in up to 80 some years. Our grandfather, Abraham Butler, purchased this property where we live um, over a hundred years ago and we feel attached to this and deserve the right to express what we would like to continue to live in. Um, Charlotte Hall was formerly the old Route 5 prior to the current dual highway and we grew up there. And to the best of my knowledge, Old Route 5 or part of it has been deemed historical. We've, we've lived there uh, when the Charlotte Hall Veterans Home was the Charlotte Hall Military Academy, an all-boys private school. We grew up while it was a school. We farmed there, and we are attached and would like to keep it as residential as possible. We all approve and can see that uh, development is coming, but let it stay on 235 or Route 5 and not bring it back on the uh, quaint, quiet Charlotte Hall Road that we live on. Um, I know that the um, developer or the owner has plans we would we just feel that we should be aware of what's getting ready to take over in our in our home district it's very vague and i'm not trying to be critical or negative but council keeps referring to this zoning situation as a mistake and I agree, I don't think it was done as a mistake, but all of a sudden that word seems to be uh, convenient or um, convenient. <laughs> Um, as if to use it as a mistake, it'll sway the commissioners or the planning commission to, oh, let's, let's <coughs> correct this mistake. Let's give him what he wants. Um, but I don't think it was a mistake. Um, some of the personal concerns I have, because I am living here on Charlotte Hall Road, um, we have a lot of trucks already going through this area from the Frito-Lay warehouse, which popped up. We don't know if a hearing was done back then because my mother's property may have been 20, 30, 40 feet to, you know, out of the boundaries. That popped up without us knowing it was going to happen until it was there. Um, traffic, if there's an accident on Route 5, everything gets uh, detoured and it turns into a hazard. I'm not going to complain about it because thank God I didn't get hit, but there have been numerous times I go to get my mail and I have to jump into the wooded part because those cars come zooming. We might have a 25 or 30 mile zone, speed zone, but the traffic comes through there like Bud's Creek, and it's not safe sometimes. So I know with development, we'll have additional traffic. We'll have additional trucks. My one, my one concern, though, to be realistic, is that if, there, if this is a changed or approved, 
if there would be some kind of restriction to keep entrance and exit traffic away from Charlotte Hall Road. I don't know if I have um, the ability to request that, but traffic is a major concern and we don't want it imposing on us any more than the regular traffic. Um, I'll probably have some other ideas afterwards, but um, I appreciate the time to um, express my concern and opposition to any commercial development. Thank you. Yes, have a good one. Hold on one second. Is there anybody oh. on the board have any questions? Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you, too. You have a good out? one. Yes, ma'am. Okay, was there anybody else? Okay. Did I have a chance to give you the oath earlier? Okay. Okay. I'm kind of loud, so I don't think I need to get too close because I'm loud anyway. <laughs> okay. um, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Oris Brown, O-R-I-S. Last name is Brown. My address is 29762 Charlotte Hall Road. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. You can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I had actually just one statement and kind of sort of two questions. Um, my one statement was to the um, agent and also to Mr. Evans where they made the comment about the neighborhood and the community has changed drastically, one said drastically and substantially. Um, but my my understanding from what I see, the neighborhood has changed and has with the fast food restaurants and so forth, but all of that is on Three Notch Road, on the main road. The only business commercial that I know that's uh, fronting Charlotte Hall Road is the Frito-Lay Company. So I wouldn't call that drastic change on Charlotte Hall Road. And then I had two kind of like, so I can say, sort of like a question, but I think Mr. Curtis might the previous caller might have kind of answered that because my one question was going to be, so without the approval to rezone, then does that mean that the developer cannot develop? And I know this is a, not a development review tonight, but just a re rezoning of the land. But my question, like I said, was going to be without the approval to rezone the land, then does that mean that they cannot develop? But based on Mr. Curtis's comment, stating that so, just even if we don't, even if you all don't approve it, they can still go ahead and um, develop on on the land the way that it is. So then, my question, I guess, would be to uh, the agent. Then, why is the request to rezone? Is it just so that they can build something bigger, or because the way it's currently zoned now, if they can build on it now? then it's what is not enough space to build something bigger is that the request why the request to rezone i guess that's my question for him i, I can give you a try to answer that but i'm also going to let the applicant also because he can rebut and um and and um answer your question also but mm -hmm. the way it is and correct me if i'm wrong mr hunt um with the split zoning that it has, it, it has a mixed use and it has a residential use. So the backside of the residential use is, met, is on the Charlotte Hall Road. The way it is right now, they could um, build houses, however many are, are permitted within the within the rules and have an entryway onto that, that to the back, I'll call it the back road. Mm -hmm. And then um, he's got a different zoning for the front of the lot and that would have entryway for the, on 235, and that's a, a, a bit more um, development-wise. It's a, it's a mixed use. Uh, if he was to get their use tonight, uh, that would become a, a mixed use. Yes, it would be more um, 
can't think of the word I want to use more intense than what it is right now, but it could be restricted that they wouldn't be able to use Charlotte Hall Road, the back road. They would it'll all have to come on to 235, mm -hmm. and it would have to be depending upon when, if and when, if and um, what the developer wants to do. They still have to come back before this board. This is just a zoning change. Right. When they come back to for whatever, I'll, I'm just going to make up a, a business. Uh, sell firewood mm -hmm. if he wants to do that out there or another dentist office let's just say that mm -hmm. say they want to have a dentist office the the board at that time would be able to restrict their entryway onto 235 if they so see that and 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 have a buffer that would um keep the back road i'll say safe keep everything with, out, out of the view of of the y'all of the neighborhood in the back Towards the towards the front, but like I say, if um, if they're allowed to develop it the way it is now, they could have houses that go onto the back road, and then they could also have business out on the front part of it. So it would be just like it, it says it'd be split zoning. They could do two different things on that lot, and uh, there wouldn't be a whole lot that we could do about that because with it being it's medicine time, <laughs> um, with it being split like that it would almost have to be entry-wise like that. Um, if I've said anything wrong, the uh, applicant can come up and, and, and uh, rebut that uh, or, or question that, or if staff has anything, if I've said anything that's not quite proper. But you looked at me when you asked that question, so <laughs> I, I answered it the best I could. It was, yeah, only because you were the chair. <laughs> but I guess you want to answer I guess I must have done a good enough job because okay. nobody's not saying anything. Okay. So we'll, we'll just leave it at that. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Gregor, go ahead and come up. Yeah, I know I swore you in. I can remember. I think there was only one person that didn't get up. I'm not really prepared for this. Um, could, you, could, you, could you sit down and, and give us your name and, and, and your address, please? I guess I can take this off. I do have some questions or some concerns. Okay. I live there. When they were speaking of historical, my house can, was built in 1935. Can we get your name and address, Oh, please? I'm sorry. Ann Gregory. Okay. And your address, 3 please? 30055. Charlotte Hall Road. I only ask that because it has to go on the record. Everything. I, you know, I have a little trouble hearing you. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, ma'am. You have five minutes. Um, I've been in my house 45 years. I don't know that there's a historical value there, and I'm not concerned about that. But uh, it just popped up, and, and what keeps popping up is mistake. Um, that property has been zoned like that for how many years? All, a long, long time, and all of a sudden, if it's a mistake, well, is there an ulterior motive there? And if it is, let us know what it is. Now, this, these owners have been trying to sell this property for some time, obviously with no success, and it's probably because of the zoning. But since he needs to have this zoning changed, then he must have some idea of what he wants to go in there. It would be nice if they come before this board with their proposal of what they want to put in there. Now, I understand there's a whole lot of stuff going on here, but um, in front of me is the proposed McKay Shopping Center that's been torn up and sitting there for well over five years and not developed. And in the beginning, I understood that the state highway said there'll be no more entrances on road on Route 5. Um, well, he finally did get his entrance off of Route 5. However, he has four entrances on Charlotte Hall Road. Mm -hmm. Now, the Golden Beach Road that comes down the side there, I also understand it has a different classification than Charlotte Hall Road as far as buffering. It's got a curb, sidewalk, nice sit back, Charlotte Hall Road has none. And it has something to do, and I'm out of my league here as far as if I'd have been more prepared, I could have had more the proper <coughs> figures down. The, the setback on Charlotte Hall Road in that project, as far as I'm concerned, is pathetic. It's a little or nothing. 
and with four entrances. Okay, on up the road, we have um, Royal Farms coming in on the old Wentworth property. You know that's gonna put more traffic on our road. We have the junkyard, which is my neighbor, which I've had to live with for all these years that should have never been allowed to be there in the first place. And we were told, oh, well, let's go ahead and allow this, give it conditional use with conditions, and we can make it better fit to community. Never happened. It's a nightmare. They've never even been required to do stormwater management. And I won't get into the junkyard because I could go on for hours. I'm still arguing with zoning on this junkyard. Um, then you have the funeral home. They were exempted from uh, parking spaces because they had to put that big sediment pond in. They have, I don't know, four or five viewing rooms. Oh, we'll never use all those. We'll not be parking out on the street. Well, yeah, they do. When they've got a big funeral there, they're parking out on the street. So when you let something like this come in without any kind of a clue on what it's going to be for and when is Charlotte Hall Road going to get reclassified so it's the, the uh, setback and the buffering is, is required that is, will better fit the community like it should? I don't know exactly what's required. Uh, Frito-Lay trucks, tractor trailers. When I go out to cut my grass, I take my life in my hands because those people, it's a straight stretch and they fly down that road. When you come across Golden Beach Road and you make a left onto Charlotte Hall Road, there's no speed limit sign. I've asked the county and public works several times, put some signs up. And the speed limit also needs to be changed. It is 40, but you give them 40, they're going to do 60. Um, they sit down near the veteran's home with radar, and I've asked them repeatedly, how don't you come up here to Frito-Lay? You could make a lot of money, but they won't do it. Now, the, the, the traffic on that road is truly unbelievable because, like the lady was saying, people don't, they want to miss the lights that come down Charlotte Hall Road. If there's an accident, whoa, it's just constantly all day. I mean, for hours until they get the mess cleaned up and they've had quite a few out there recently. Um, you also got tractor trailers that comes down that road to go to the veterans home. So there's a lot of activity on that road and it, that, that needs to be looked at more seriously. But my, I'll get back, because I can get off on tangents, but I'll get back to my main point, mistake. I have to agree with that young man that was on the phone. Was that really a mistake? Because that seems like the only reason that you're given here to uh, justify this reclassification. And it sounds to me like that's not a very legitimate reason. Um, if the owner of the property has some potential development that he wants to do that requires it to be rezoning, then let him come in and apply for the rezoning. I don't know if that's the way it's done or not, or maybe it's not. But um, there's lots of problems over there already and without knowing what is planned there. Something, obviously, there's an ulterior, uh, ulterior motive. Something is planned obviously. So, now. Um, Could you wrap up, please, don't, ma'am? Don't, don't let me forget to mention. When the junkyard came in there, I was there first. There was no junkyard. I had assessment records that proved it. After the junkyard came in, the assessor for years that I didn't even know about was depreciating my property, 25% junkyard influence. It's right on the records. And they let it stay and they, let, they, they first approved four acres, then they let him expand it to the full 10 acres with conditions. He's never uh, applied, uh, followed any of those conditions. The setback for the fence, it's an E40 buffer yard. It should be back 85 feet. It's back 40 feet. No, nobody ever enforces anything. So you guys go ahead and get together and you prove this stuff, but then who, where enforcement comes in, it don't happen. And I think people here have seen that and they're seeing it come again. It's going to get worse. Now, I do have TMX zoning, but the reason they gave it to me is because you cannot approve a use that depreciates adjoining property values. 
So to compensate me, they gave me that under the new comprehensive plan. Um, I'm there, I'm probably gonna be there for a long time. Um, I don't have any, uh, 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 any um, thoughts of selling it right now, but when I do sell it, it will, it's already got the TMX zoning on it. So uh, I'll leave that up to whoever wants to buy it, the headaches of what they're gonna do there. But uh, I've seen a lot of stuff go on, go on there that's pretty pathetic. So that's, okay. I guess that's about it if I'm okay. making any sense. Does anybody have any questions of Ms. Greger? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, was there anybody? Um, yeah. Was there anybody else that hasn't spoken? Yes, ma'am. You already spoke at the beginning, am I correct? Yes, I just, we just wanted to have a question. Does the, do the citizens have the ability to redress? Are we able to respond after the applicant has spoken? No, um, after public testimony, the, the board will open it up to the um, applicant for re rebuttal, and then that's followed by board deliberations. May I now, ask one question? Um, you can't ask a question. I can give you, you can, this is part of public testimony. I mean, you can't question the applicant. No, no, I don't, no. I just wanted to just put a question out to the commission. Go, um, my, and my brother brought it up with his uh, testimony. I'm, I'm, I'm running a tight thread here. Um, just one question that. Well, I'm, uh, one question that might open the board, might open it up to a lot more. Um, Mr. Murphy. Am I allowed to let them ask another question after they've done their public testimony this evening? I don't want anything to mess mess this up. So, uh, once public Do, why don't you pull that mic up there, Mr. Mayor, or sit down? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sorry about you. Hi, mic. everyone. Okay. So, um, once public testimony has concluded or public comment has concluded, there is no more public comment. At that point, the applicant has the right to respond, and the public has no right to then ask further questions. I guess what she public, wants, though, is oh, to sure. ask a question exactly. before so, public testimony has been closed. Is that absolutely is that, so? You have the right to uh, manage public comment if she just wants to raise another question. She, she certainly may. Okay. And I was looking up uh, actually as. I was being called up here as to whether the uh, public has the right to cross-examine the applicant. Um, and if you permit me 20 seconds, I might be able to find that answer. Mr. Longmore may have that knowledge offhand though, um, but if you permit me 20 seconds, I might be able to, whether she can ask the applicant or the public. All right, well, while you do that, we're gonna take a, a small recess sure. um, and, then, and then come back into Order. Um, we're going to give it about a three, three or four minute recess. Okay.
Okay. Bring the meeting back into order. Go ahead. That's all you want for. Um, Murphy. Hello again. Hello again. Uh, so the question uh, before the break was whether we could allow additional public testimony from those who have previously spoken. Uh, public testimony on the conduct of the meetings generally is at uh, the discretion of the chairman. Um, however, if uh, people want to speak for just a, a tad bit longer, they certainly may, but again, that decision's with the chair. Uh, to answer my rhetorical question that I thought was being asked, they cannot ask the applicant questions. Okay. Uh, but All right, well, what I'm gonna said. do right. is, um, Thank you. I'm gonna let them ask one question. I had one, one citizen ask if they could ask a, a question. Uh, I will let them do that. Um, I'm trying to do that only because one, it's a very important thing, but I can't let everybody come back up and ask another question. If that's gonna be the case, then I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna allow it. Um, May I ask? Not, not, you have to come up to a microphone if you're gonna <laughs> ask a question. That's why I say if it's gonna start, then then like I say, it would be unfair to the to anybody else. I allowed them five minutes. I can't, I can't say, okay, you can have a minute, but. You can't have a minute, you know. I'm not going. I'm not going to touch that one. No, no, ma'am. Not tonight. Not with y'all. <laughs> so, if there is a question, a question that y'all would like to ask, you can come up to the microphone and ask it. Point of clarification. Yes, ma'am. Are you saying there's only one question that can be asked, or are you saying that? Well, the as I say, it, 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 <coughs> this this is public testimony it's not a it's not a um, um, we're not opening the case back up uh, I'll say as far as as it's going into the minutia of it so if you have a question that has to do with what we spoke about during public testimony you can come up and do that and I like it when people work together to come up with that one because I know this, you're going to ask me a really toughie. I know it's coming, so. <laughs> I want to thank Just you. Just give, give me your name one Carolyn more time. Carolyn Curtis. Okay, thank you, ma'am. And to thank you for the opportunity to ask the question. Yes, ma'am. It will be a statement, and then it will be a question that I would like for the commissioners to ponder. Short statement. As stated in the comprehensive plan. Why, why don't you come to this microphone? This one. That, one doesn't, that one doesn't seem to be doing okay. very good tonight. <laughs> As stated in the comprehensive plan, in general, St. Mary's County must strive to preserve and enhance its present character and improve the quality of life for its citizens. As we have heard in the public testimony and has come up from a previous testimony in regard to the fact that there are 31 signatories of the community that do not want this rezoning. My question to the commissioner and the board is at what point in time do the rights and the desires and the interests of the community at large, not one person, 31 signatories outweigh the desires of one developer. We have literally contributed to this community for over a century and continue to contribute to this community, St. Mary's County, Maryland. At what point do the desires, interests, wants of the citizens outweigh the desire of one developer. That is my question, thank you. Okay, I don't know if that can be answered and, and, and just, and that's, that's, that's a. It's open-ended. Excuse me? That's an open-ended question. Yeah. You'll never get to the end of it. It's a consideration that you need to think of, please. Oh my gosh. Okay, now I'm getting to, 
to that wire point where I said I wasn't going to let everybody come up and ask one question. It, well, I know I, I know that, but it's it's opening up to every person in here. I'd have to say that Mr. McCauley, you can come up and ask your question now. Um, you know, every, everybody would be able to. You know, um, Ms. Gregory, you can come up and ask your question now. Uh, I have to call Mr. Curtis back. Well, I, but I'm just saying it, it's, it's starting something that we don't normally have. And that's why I tried to explain that I would let this be one, one question. It's a procedural question that I referred to in my comment about the petition. That you, you, have come up to, you have to come up to the microphone. <laughs> my name is Joan Waters. I apologize. While I was giving comment, I failed to ask how to submit the letter from um, the letter that's attached to the petition from our neighbors. Oh, that's an easy one. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to go home with it and say, ah, oh, I forgot to give it to you. You can turn that over to Mr. Hunt. His staff will take care of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Got out of that one. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so I get another question? No. No, ma'am. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Okay, having no, none others, um, do you want to check and see if we have anybody else online? Planning Commission Public Hearing. Hi, Ms. Wood, do we have anyone else on the line wishing to speak? No, we don't. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's close public testimony. <laughs> All right. Um, I'd like to thank the folks that, that did bring it. Your um, probably one of the finest sets of uh, public testimony or, or community group coming together to bring information that I've I've seen. I'll leave it at that. Well, y'all should be proud. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close public testimony. And um, Mr. Longmore, you can come back up for a rebuttal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I guess to begin, I, I'll echo a little bit of your sentiment that, um, you know, I certainly, my client disagrees with some of the statements and and um, I have some, some items to address. Uh, I, we appreciate the fact that the community has the right to be here and, and we appreciate the tone in which they, they that all of the folks here are presented, even though we disagree with them. That's what this is supposed to be, is more civil and it's nice to see that because we don't see that every day today. So so we do appreciate um, the fact that they're here. Um, I will address some, some of our responses to it just so the board is aware. One um, item that I'd like to address very specific, um, I, I believe it was Mr. Curtis who had called in um, and it said that State Highway did not recommend approval of this. There was a revised comment letter that I just want to have in the record. I believe the Planning Commission all got copies of it, but I'll just note it for the record that there was a typographical error in the original email from State Highway and the Department of Transportation. Um, just to read it into the record, their opinion was that MDOT SHA, which is Maryland Department of Transportation State Highway Administration, has no objection to the proposed amendment for both land use and zoning maps. So I just want to make sure that's in the record. Um, that was circulated, I believe, in response to a question Ms. Carolyn Curtis had before the hearing that was addressed by staff. Um, there are just a couple of points I'd like to make. One is that um, I did not come up with the word mistake. I just want to make that clear. There, there's case law that says <laughs> that, uh, that there are two reasons why a zoning map uh, amendment can be given. One is that there may have been a mistake in the original zoning. One is that there's been a significant change in the neighborhood. Um, so that we believe we meet both standards. Um, we think that the split zoning of the property itself is the mistake, that it is disfavored under Maryland law. We know folks may agree with it, but even if this planning commission disagrees with that, um, 
The second standard is independent of the other one. It can be both or one of them. And we believe that we highlighted the changes in the neighborhood, not the things that have not changed, because what we need to show is that the neighborhood has changed since 2010 and really a couple of years before that in, in, in the process of that comprehensive plan. Um, and, and we cited the examples of that. Um, you know, I, really what I, what I hear here, it's nice to hear folks come and, and wanna talk about the planning process for something for me that that's what I do that that means something to me where I think a lot of these things stem from is that comprehensive plan and the one before where Charlotte Hall was designated for development within our community and we're in a growing community there's there's no doubt about that and there's a lot of I sit before you with a lot of uh, folks that are applying for different applications and it's difficult in each community that that goes into and I know you've seen every neighborhood in this county come out and often oppose things. I grew up across the street here and there was no hospital in my backyard. There were five cornfields and now you can look and there's an entire development where I used to play and garden with my grandmother. I, I, I wish I could go back to that days in a lot of ways but but there are changes that come in our community and what our comprehensive plan has done is named development district and town centers where development is supposed to go. Um, if there are citizens that don't want it in those areas, they have the opportunity right now that I know at, our, at your meeting a week ago was talked about, that the comprehensive plan is being undertaken right now. Ms. Jenkins is helping take the lead on that process along with Mr. Hunt. They should have every right to voice their concerns there at that stage instead of later in the stage. Now. We're, we're here today talking about only a proposed zoning uh, map amendment, and nobody is trying to hide the ball from any anyone. Uh, my client wants to have it rezoned. They think it's a better zoning for where the property is situated now. But there was one comment, I, I believe um, it was one of the first couple of speakers, they said, well, once they get this, of course they're gonna be able to build whatever they want. I'm in front of you all to know that people don't get whatever they want, and I have a lot of examples I could cite that I know all of you know. They, my client, like all clients, will have to go through the process to get any site plan developed. Um, this planning commission does take great strides, and sometimes uh, I've argued against some of the positions you've taken, but you take great strides that when somebody comes in with the development that you try to protect the neighborhood around there and these folks should know that and, and I think that even if you voted to recommend this zoning change so that it's no longer split zone and we think a more appropriate zoning given that it's situated right next to southern states and in between another commercial property um, that that does not mean that this will destroy this neighborhood there's a lot more this applicant would need to go through if they choose to develop it later and there are a lot more protections that can be put into place we're, we're here in a very early step in the process, simply asking for this to be rezoned. I, I know that this commission has seen more rezonings than normal, and, and I, my view is that that's because we're at the end of the life of this comprehensive plan and we're about to start another one. So you, that's when you see more people coming in and saying things have changed since the last one. That's what my um, client is here asking um, for tonight. So, um, that's really the thoughts that we'd, we'd like to leave with you. We'd ask that you recommend this up favorably to the Board of County Commissioners. Um, you know, my client has heard the concerns of the neighborhood and any future development. It'll be at his risk if he doesn't take those into consideration because he's gonna have to be sitting in front of you, you know, again, with any type of site plan. So again, we appreciate the, while we disagree with some of the points that were made tonight, we appreciate the tone with what they're made, and we just ask that you consider what our request is and not the, the concerns of future requests, and we believe a favorable recommendation would be appropriate. So thank you. Any questions, Mr. Lomo, before he hops up? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we've closed all testimony now, and we'll begin board deliberations. Would anybody like to go first? Okay. You had your hand up, go ahead. <laughs> I agree with you, and I, because I wrote it down earlier that I felt that, I mean, I think that you all did a very professional job in presenting your position to me, and I appreciate that. Um, my takeaway from this is quality of life is the biggest concern, particularly the fact that the safety of everybody that lives on that road, if in fact the traffic the ingress and egresses um, on Charlotte Hall Road. 
I think they're the two main issues, quality of life and safety, if, I'm, if I heard correctly. Um, so with that, I certainly would like, I would like to state that without having something in this motion that prevents them from, prevents the builder, or I mean, not the developer, from, from going, from using that back as an entrance or an exit into, two thir into um, Charlotte Hall Road. That, that has to and, and, not happen. And I, I would respectfully say this is not the right time for that because we're not talking about any kind of development today. That's what we would put if, let's just say, the same set of people came up to us six months from now and said, now I want to build X, Y, and Z right here. That is, I think, where we would actually have to say, this is what you're allowed. If you want, if you want to build this, the, these are our conditions. Right now, there's no proposal in front of us on building. So there's really no way you can, I, 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 you can string or, or tie down this piece of property in the zoning itself, other than the zoning. I think that's the only thing at, at, at discussion right now is the zoning itself and whether we, we want to make the two parts of this one property one zoning or keep uh, do nothing and then keep this one piece of property with two separate zonings that are different. I don't. I can't refute what you're saying because I don't know if it's. I think that's a question that we need, Mr. Hunt, to answer whether we even have the authority that's to do what that. I'm saying I don't know if we do or we don't. Mr. Hunt, can you address that? I argue. Good evening. On that, I'd have to defer to Mr. Murphy, if that's something that a rezoning request can have as a condition. In my experience, it's not, but he would be the legal expert to be able to say if something like that can go along with the rezoning. Mr. Murphy, you can come up. I don't, I don't see how that, that can be, you know, because this is a rezoning. It's not, has nothing to do with the, the, the development of the lot. Um, we would be able to bring our teeth out when, the, when that comes back. Yeah. That would be my position as well, uh, placing any limits on the possibility of development would be outside the scope of this request okay. and possibly a, a burden of the pro on the property that could be the subject of an appeal. Yeah, don't want, we don't want that. Thank you. <laughs> my pleasure. And we went, we went through this on that last piece. But without the rezoning, or trying to you know, put restrictions on the, re, on the rezoning, again, I don't think it's the time. But depending on what happens here tonight, if we, if we were to agree to rezone the property, mm -hmm. we then have the tools that we need to uh, put any restrictions in the, when they come back for development. Yeah, to refresh my, my statement in October when we heard uh, a similar case to the uh, other property, uh, uh, not adjacent, but uh, two, two properties away. Um, you know, my intent is to vote on what best protects this community. This community has roots that go way back. Um, I know what that's like. I, I don't have too many roots in this country, but um, I had to sell a house that was in my family for 94 years this year. That was very difficult for me. Um, so I can appreciate that family connection. Um, and initially in October, I thought that the best thing to do was to keep it as is. It wasn't until uh, Mr. Sinclair actually um, brought up the fact to, to me and to all of us in our deliberations that we have more control over how this property is developed when it's developed, when it's a single zoning. When it's split zoning the way it is now, the property owner has the right to build something that's allowed in residential. They could build, I'm just saying, for example, a dance studio that would have weekly classes after school on the residential part. It's, it's, it'd be a residential community. The person could live there. They could teach in their, in their living room. They could have about a dozen cars every day after school. Um, that would be allowed under the current zone. I'm not, not saying that would happen. I'm saying that could. Or a dentist office that could have 
regular businesses. That's also allowed in, in that zoning, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then whatever is happening on the more densely developed area that's on um, 235, I mean, um, on, on, yeah, would, 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 would stay on three knots, would still um, be allowed to be developed that way. When we, if we choose to merge the zoning like we did in October, now when somebody comes back and says we want to develop this property, we can say we have a community here, they've got concerns. We don't want driveways on Charlotte Hall. We can't tell somebody who owns property on Charlotte Hall that you're not, you can build a house there, but you can't put a driveway on there and you can't have access to it. Or you have to access your house through the driveway of an industrial building that's on the major highway. So I think that's the reason we voted uh, in favor of, of correcting, or I won't use the word correcting, but um, changing the zoning in October. Um, and I still believe now three months later that that is the best tool for us. I, I changed my mind in that meeting based upon the, the deliberation, deliberations there, and I, I stand by that, that if my job is to look out for what's best for the community, I don't work for the county. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a citizen just like everyone else here, um, and that's my job. Somebody asked, you know, the 30 people versus one developer. Well, who, who represents the 30? Well, that's what we do here. We're all citizens who are doing this because we are trying to give the citizens their voice. Um, if this was in my backyard, I would be here as well complaining and saying, I don't want this, because I know it's gonna come down the road. Um, and uh, you know, we're, we're not stupid. But just like I have the right to own property and build a house and within the code, I can put a swimming pool in and the deck in the back, maybe put some outbuildings and sheds, you know, um, this property owner has a right to develop their property. And <coughs> so the question is, do we want to have a hands-on approach to it by controlling the uses with the zoning, or do we want to walk away from, you know, the task at hand and then have the possibility of not being able to restrict driveways and access on, on uh, Charlotte Hall Road because we didn't do the change today. So that, that's that's where I stand. Okay. Ms. Summers, you have anything you want to add? Yeah, so I recall at some point we were able to see um, a map that showed a larger area of property in Charlotte Hall that designated other areas that were maybe mixed use or, or zoned in a couple of different area ways. So we've, we saw this in October, I believe, with what, a two acre, acre parcel of property. This one is bigger. Um, I'm just curious, are there more out there? Are these side by side? Are they gonna be eventually sold, you know, combined and sold? I mean, what are, what are we looking at here? We don't have, we don't have the magic. I, I know, but I think <laughs> we nice need to, to be thinking. There are, if you go on the county GIS site, there's there's several pieces of property that work their way, I'll say, south uh, in that direction that are split zoned right now. Um, some of them are, I'll say, as, as you, the further you go south, the more you see uh, farms, more, more rural type property, whereas the ones that are up top here are closer to the town center and are more intensely developed. Um, you can you can look at that and, and see, and then as you go north, everything turns into town mixed use. Uh, across the road is town mixed use. I'm just scanning around here, and of course, um, residential uh, low density is is back on Charlotte Hall Road. But yes, there are there are some that go down. But um, I'll say a lot of these properties that we we have been looking at um, have already had something on them. And uh, and or are very close to um, to what's like. Take for instance, next door to Southern States, you know, and the, this piece of property we're looking at tonight is is between already two businesses. Whereas if you head south after that, the only um, I'll say business that I can see on the map, and it's not really a business right now, is where we used to have Woods uh, 
vegetable meat stand, um, which right now I don't think is in business until you get all the way down to uh, the library, get down to close to that site. So it changes quite a bit after, uh, I'll say the Southern States and the doctor's office and, and the old wood stand that was there. Everything else after that turns into resi more residential along that path. It's a nice, uh, this GIS map, you can put any layer that you want. It'll, it'll tell you the zoning, it'll tell you everything you want. You can go down the side and click it off and it's a, it's a pretty handy little tool. So uh, it do, does help you out, helps you with the zoning. Um, anyway. Um, but Ms. Summers, like you were saying, like, it, it crossed my mind too. Like, what if I own Southern Estates and now somebody just got two of their properties rezoned and they want to buy me out? If the price is right, I may want to buy them out. I, I represent Big Box Mart, you know, and I want to put one of my big box stores there. Well, luckily, we have some protections, some zonings in place. Um, I don't think it would fit on that property, um, but, um, you know, that's something in the future that we don't have the crystal ball also, you know. Really, the question is, is what can we do today to protect the citizens? That's, that's, that's where I come down from. Now, I know you're from that area. You live up that, that area. Um, so I wouldn't want to vote in anything that's going to hurt you as well, you know. So I, I just think that, you know, from, from a planning perspective, from the state's perspective, you know, split zoning is uh, discouraged. It's a, it's a poor um, practice. It's, um, and there's very, there's some legal reasons for why it can cause problems such as let's limit, you know, driveways on, on, uh, on, on the local road and then somebody has a property they want to develop. So um, I, I think having that, um, and of course we talked about it in October with uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Robert that um, could we down zone it? Well, then that's a takings issue right. and we can't do that as well. So there's two different zonings. We have to zone upwards to the more heavier dense or the higher valued uh, zoning. So um, I mean, it's an unfortunate situation. It, 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 it'd be much nicer if that was two separate properties because if there are two separate properties, we wouldn't be discussing this at all. Um, but that's not the case and the owner is not asking us to subdivide the property and keep the zoning. The, the case in front of us is to, uh, to uh, change the zoning. So, okay. I mean, I, I don't see anything has changed my mind from October and, and I'm gonna vote uh, in favor of this because I think it's the best thing that when they come back six months or a year or, or two years, you know, God willing, I'm still on this board, you know, I'm gonna make sure that everything is done in that power to keep that rural community. I grew up in a rural community and we did not have our act together the way St. Mary's County has. And there's almost nothing left from where I grew up. It's all just suburban sprawl. And that's kind of one of the things that brought me into becoming a planner, uh, previously as a profession and now as a citizen, um, is what can I do to curtail that and look out for what's best for the citizens. And so I can only do what I think is right and that's the way I'm gonna vote. I, I still have a question. In our toolbox, Mr. Hunt, and this is for you again, the piece of property, if it was zoned, brought it all under one zoning that they're asking for here tonight, does this board have the authority to limit an access to Charlotte Hall Road? Do we have that authority? A legal lot of record has the right to an access. In this case, it's a through lot. It has frontage on two public roads on either side. It has to have it has the right, the owner has the right to have access off of one of those roads. Right. Can the Planning Commission prohibit access off of both or dictate which one the access is to come off of? I don't know the answer to that. That's a, that's a big question for me. So I'm hoping the attorneys in the room can answer that. 
I, I think in the zoning case, it would be a takings issue. I think that would be come up in a, in a challenge in a future court case. If you have a piece of property and it is zoned with one zoning, with one zone versus a split zone. Let's get the answer from legal. Well, cut me off then. I'm not, cu I'm not cutting you off. It's all right. What, I, what, I'm try what I'm trying to do, I've been sitting here all night waiting for somebody to well, answer I, that. I was because trying to give you a hand We're down. sitting on the board going, been can it be done, can it be done? about as long as you, so I mean, I, I know a little bit of stuff, but go ahead. I'm sorry about that's you. Right. You're having a law degree. I do not have one. Oh, go that's, ahead. All, that's fine. Um, I don't have the experience in planning as, as the rest of you. So you we better get some tonight. You better get some. <laughs> <laughs> but so um, at this time, you cannot place those limitations. And I don't think that's where the question was, but whether you could do that in the future uh, to limit on which road you ha are required to access uh, the po or which road you have to use, uh, which public road. Um, I don't know, I'd have to check uh, that you might be able to, uh, particularly if there are um, traffic issues or something on, on one or, or safety um, concerns, things that this planning commission generally has the right to review. Um, but at this time, I don't think it would be appropriate, but going forward, I, uh, when the question presents itself, I can have an answer, but uh, at this time, no. Just looking back in the past, um, the Thank easiest you. one I can remember right now is North Sandgate Road. They were going to have an entryway on North Sandgate Road and 235. We had talked to them, tried to talk to the applicant that if they had stuck to strictly 235 in and out, they might have passed that night, but they were insistent on having a entryway on a rural county road. Yeah. And that was probably the, lack of a better term, death nail on them yeah. um, up in Hollywood. There was a large development wanted to go in. Uh, they had an entryway. They wanted two, they actually wanted three entryways. They wanted an entryway on Sodley Road. They wanted an entryway on Old Hollywood Road. And they wanted an entryway on 235. Uh, this board tried to speak to them about not using the Sodley Road and about using the old Hollywood Road as a uh, strictly a service entrance. They didn't go for that and uh, that that went its way. It, it got voted down. So yeah, there, there are times when this board can can restrict it to a certain road. And, and without that, uh, if we vote so against, you know, if they insist that they um, and I'm just saying this, don't, don't, <laughs> don't get mad at him, but say that this gentleman wants to build his firewood selling stand, as I said, for another do or another dentist office. And he, they insist on having a um, entryway on Old Charlotte Road, Old Charlotte Hall Road, and 235. This board, um, in my opinion, and, and has done so in the past, could say no. We, you know, we, we we agree that you could have one on 235, but we're going to protect the other other one, and it would have to come out in a vote that evening as to how that board went forward. I mean, we want to protect. That's part of our job is to protect and the safety. And it seems like all the big decisions that we've had over the last few years always comes down to traffic and safety. Yeah. So, but that's. And there's been know. a lot of safety concerns, uh, you know, brought up today. Yeah. Uh, and I, I was going to also rest. say, Mr. Mills, I hope he heard the traffic sign uh, debacle, not debacle, just suggestions. And I'm sure he, he'll be looking into that because Donnie's good about that. But before we go any further, Mr. Van Kirk, I haven't heard from you at all tonight. Are you, are, are, do you have anything you want to add during deliberations this evening? I didn't have too much, but I did want to comment on what you just said about um, ingress and egress. I mean, I do think it's fully within the board's purview when we're looking at a concept plan, not at this time, to say this is what we prefer um, doesn't mean that the board's going to vote by the way a couple people may think. But I, I like I said, I fully believe we've done that before. 
that it's within our purview. And I used to argue with one of our other board members who's not on the board any longer about, well, you can't change what state highway or the county says. Well, no, we can't. But they may say they want an entrance on 235, but if we vote against it, the project's not happening unless it moves on to the next appeal. So I think to answer, in my best opinion, Mr. Sinclair's question, I think it's totally within our purview um, for that. Um, I do want to address one more thing. You know, I've heard all the all the residents and I sympathize with them. Um, nobody likes development. You know, wherever we live, wherever we drive, wherever we, we go, nobody necessarily likes unknown development, I think is one of their problems. And we always have that before a plan comes to us, you know, as far as the concept, it's just right now zoning it so it can get there. And I think we as a board have enough common sense to realize all these people are not rezoning properties just to go through the process. You know, it's got marketability and sellability. So that's what they're doing. And I would venture to say like, like Ms. Summers asked, and I don't think her question was really answered because we probably can't answer it, but I'd venture to say all them properties that are through there that are split zoned will be coming up to be rezoned. So I think we can expect that. Um, the last point I'll make is <clears throat> I've heard a couple of the board members talk about, you know, possibly in the future, maybe trying to restrict access or, or do something like that. And I think it depends on the plan, but we pretty much better take, look at this concept of Charlotte Hall Road for any project that's gonna be developed on, in between Charlotte Hall Road and Point Lookout, I mean, um, 235. So just some points to, just some points to um, to ponder there. So that's all I have. Appreciate the chance to speak, and everyone have a Merry Christmas. Me too, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. But stick around. We got a vote to do. <laughs> okay. Is there any other deliberations from the board? Would anybody like to make a motion? I like the motion. Okay. In the matter of zone 21-0063, 29805 Three Notch Road, having accepted the staff report and having made a finding that the objectives of section 21.2.2 and 28.3.2 of the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance, Ordinance have been met and known that the reference project has met all requirements for a comprehensive plan amendment and zoning map amendment approval, I move that the comprehensive plan amendment to change to split land use from residential mixed use and residential medium density to entirely mixed use moderate intensity and a zoning map amendment to change to split zone property from residential mixed use and residential low density to entirely town center mixed use zoning district request be recommended to be approved by the commissioners of St. Mary's County. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. A motion, I have a second. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, I'll go roll call vote, Mr. Evans. Aye. Mr. St. Clair. Aye. Ms. Summers. Nay. Okay. Mr. Fazekas. Aye. Ms. Roberg. Nay. Mr. Van Kirk. Nay. Okay, and I'll vote aye. Okay. Um, this matter will go, before, as I say, before the um, county commissioners at the time. Y'all will be able to do uh, return for that public um, meeting at that time when it goes for when they uh, decide they're going to either approve or disapprove it. I'd like to thank you all for your time this evening, patience, and all your information. We do appreciate that. Good luck, Mr. Malamo, you and your applicant.
Okay. Is there any other business? That's it. I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Same to you. Happy New Year. Won't see you till next year. Hoping for snow. Okay. Wear my lucky snow tie, hoping for some snow. <laughs> Evidently, you don't have to plow snow, Mr. Fazekas. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Okay. All right. Uh, all in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 A